Parkinson's disease is, uh, you know, obviously a very debilitating disorder with many different symptoms, but the sort of unifying symptoms that have been observed since it was first defined as a disease entity are the motor symptoms, the, the tremor, the difficulty initiating movements. And we know that those uh, particular uh, pathognomonic symptoms are the result of midbrain dopaminergic neuron loss. But what's been observed pathologically for decades is that not all midbrain dopamine neurons die, um, only some die. And we've known a little bit about that uh, selective death, that it occurs only in a specific part of the substantia nigra. But we didn't know um, what genes are being used by those specific cells that die. And if we could understand the differences between the gene expression program, programs between the cells that seem to be more uh, vulnerable to this disease and the cells that are more resistant to the disease, we thought we might be able to learn something about why these cells are particularly sensitive to this process. And single cell analysis is just a perfect um, fit for this particular problem. So, um, you know, a lot of very exciting technological developments have happened over the last five years that have allowed us to basically take a piece of tissue from a brain, take out the individual nuclei within each cell um, from a frozen piece of postmortem tissue. And over many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of cells, identify which genes are being transcribed, used by every individual cell in that nucleus. And so we did this across many different people with and without Parkinson's disease. So we could start to define what are the cell, different kinds of dopamine neurons that um, exist in just a regular uh, you know, human brain. And how do those different types of neurons change proportionally in people with Parkinson's and without Parkinson's? So it, it was a really nice opportunity to use this really now um, uh, quite mature new technology of, you know, five-year-old technology to answer a pretty basic question about, um, you know, Parkinson's disease. So we identified a total of 10 different types of cells just based on the genes that they use. And this was more sort of types than had been appreciated before. And although it's not related to Parkinson's disease, really, we actually found that one of them is um, specific to primates. So that doesn't exist actually in rodents. And actually it turns out that those cells are the ones that are the, the least vulnerable, the most resistant to neurodegeneration. Um, so we were able just to sort of identify a full map of the cell types that are present amongst these uh, substantia nigra dopamine neurons. But then we found this particular population, um, which is marked by the angiotensin receptor, AGTR1, um, that is by far, you know, uh, the most uh, vulnerable to disease. So it's by far the most vulnerable to uh, degeneration in Parkinson's disease. And so now that we had these 10 different types and we could get a sense of how they were all differentially vulnerable, had one, you know, these one set of cells that I mentioned the, uh, before uh, that are the most resistant. And then these other set of cells that are the most vulnerable, we could start to ask how the gene expression programs are different and why potentially um, certain cells are more uh, are more vulnerable and certain more resistant. And the thing that we found that was the best explanation is when you look at the genes that are um, associated with Parkinson's disease in recent GWAS studies. So people have, you know, just done, uh, you know, genotyping on thousands of people with Parkinson's and, and thousands of controls and identified a bunch of loci that are specifically um, uh, influencing your risk for Parkinson's disease. We found that the genes at those loci are more likely to be expressed in the cells that are vulnerable. So it suggests that it's just kind of like a genetic loading. Like there's just a bunch of these genetic, uh, you know, uh, these genes that are, that are, you know, giving you risk for Parkinson's disease. And they're more likely to be expressed in the cells that die. Um, and so it really tells us that, that potentially by, you know, sort of toying with the gene expression programs of these cells, there may be ways to help them survive longer. I think there's a really clear next step, and that involves doing the same kind of process of taking the vulnerable cells um, from postmortem tissue, but in other regions of the brain that we know are also vulnerable to Parkinson's disease. So the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve, which is also highly um, susceptible, as well as the locus ceruleus. So these cell types are embryonically, developmentally very, very different from, or not very different, but substantially different from the substantia nigra dopamine neurons. And so the question is, are there certain commonalities that they might share 
across these different developmental um, uh, lineages that make them particularly susceptible. And I think when we have that kind of diverse set of cells that can tell that, that, that in their sort of a, a sense of how they're particularly vulnerable versus resistant in the different subtypes, that will really get us the, give us the opportunity to pinpoint specific kind of modules and gene expression patterns that um, are potentially more causally implement, in, in, um, more causally uh, implicated in, in the kind of process of neurodegeneration in PD.